Howdy, Tubal Kane again from Illinois. I'm about to beat this uh, threading subject to death, and I think this will be the last video on threading. And I'm, you're probably saying, "Thank goodness!" But uh, we're going to talk about Acme threads and how to cut an Acme thread. And a few of you have a use for that from time to time. But be sure and subscribe to my channel and look at my 150 other videos that are on old engines and machine shop related and that type of thing for you older guys like me that like cutting metal. Now in the way of review for those of you that aren't quite sure what an Acme thread is, and I did talk about them in one of my other videos, but uh, this is an Acme thread and they are 29 degrees and do not confuse them with the square thread. We're not talking about square threads. It's Acme and an Acme thread isn't a thread that the Roadrunner liked necessarily, but it refers to the shape of the thread and uh, down here we got some other pictures showing the uh, uh, some of the formulas and uh, determining the sizes and so on of an Acme thread. But let's review real quickly what uh, an Acme thread is. Will that stick there? I don't know if that's going to show up very well. You know you can pause these videos if you want to read some of this stuff too. And these uh, uh, pictures that I'm putting up here came either from the South Bend lathe book or from the Atlas lathe book so I like to give them credit but an Acme screw thread is often found in power transmissions where heavy loads necessitate close fitting threads another application is in the lead screws and feed screws of precision machine tools the lead screw cross feed and compound rest feed screws of most lathes have Acme threads a lot of them are left hand Acme threads as well so uh, that's pretty interesting there and also you're going to see them in uh, C-clamp screws, vice screws, and uh, oh jacks and other places uh, where a V-thread does not work very well. A V-thread when you put a nut on it does tend to tighten up and bind and we aren't interested in tightening this. We're interested most of the time in transmitting motion except for the case of if it is in a vice or a, a uh, C-clamp. There really isn't much difference between uh, cutting a V-thread and an Acme thread on the lathe other than we're going to have our tool ground at 29 degrees rather than 60 degrees and our compound will be set at half of the 29 degrees which is going to be then uh, 14 and a half degrees and you will be using an Acme threading gauge which looks uh, like this. I'll give you another close-up view of that and these can be, this is like a $50 tool if you buy it uh, a Steric brand but I think you can find these cheaper on eBay As a matter of fact there's probably some that are made in China that are uh, super cheap. I'm sure they're probably stamped out of old Schlitz beer cans though and made by a barefoot boy in a hut with a dirt floor but nevertheless they may get you by. Now looking here we got uh, one formula that we're interested in and that is the depth of the thread and the depth equals the pitch divided by 2 plus 10 thousandths. I'm going to cover that a little bit more at the end of the video. If you're not interested in it you can omit that part. Your tool bit needs to be ground at 29 degrees. Now I'm going to be using a straight tool holder that does not require this 16 and a half degree back rake but if you're holding this in a standard uh, Armstrong type tool holder you know that uh, presents the tool to the work at 16 and a half degrees you need to grind that uh, uh, top rake on there. Uh, this is the side view and this of course is the top view of what the, the tool looks like. This may be the biggest part of the job for you, grinding a tool that is the right form, because this is a forming tool. This is a pictorial view of work held between centers, and this is how we set it up. Instead of using a center gauge, we're going to use that uh, Acme gauge that I showed you, 
and it has several purposes. It's uh, for grinding the tool and also for setting it uh, perfect, your tool perfectly square to the work. You have to be perpendicular and that's how we're going to do it. You recall we used a center gauge when we did a regular 60 degree thread. Here's a close-up view of the uh, Sterrett. That's a number 284, 29 degree tool gauge. All these little notches along there have a meaning. And this, of course, is the 29 degrees right in here. And that will, we will use for grinding. And let me flip that over now. See if I can get it centered. Okay. That's for grinding the tool. And then this angle over here, I just showed you in one of the pictures, and it can be used to... Uh, square the tool up with the work when you're over at the lathe still at the bench right now so we grind the tool I'm going to show you some larger mock-ups of a tool I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about tools but that's the main part of this job you can fast forward through it if it's too much for you but what you need to do in grinding this tool is I like to uh, and this is a, a large tool here this is a 3 8 square and I just made it uh, a larger one here uh, so that it will show up a little better and put some layout bluing or dye on there and that might help you and then uh, if if this helps you go ahead and literally trace it off of the gauge then when you take it to your grinder it will make it uh, pretty easy for you to get that uh, angle now on the sides we have to have that those uh, side relief This is a tool I've had so long. I've had it since high school. So <laughs> this isn't the one I'm going to use on the lathe, but uh, forgive me, I was 16 years old when I ground this, so it, it's kind of awkward looking, but this still would cut all right. Got my name on it. Yet I put my name on everything when I was in high school. So anyway, grind that so it, uh, so it is 29 degrees. And if you want to practice on some soft stock, go ahead and do that because it's, not as easy to do as what you might think unless you're an old hand at it and then it's nothing. Now the other thing is we got to decide what size the thread is going to be. Well we're going to cut a one half inch diameter six threads per inch Acme thread. This is a uh, screw that I took out of an old uh, C-clamp and since I didn't have a nut to match I literally sawed off the uh, C-clamp and uh, that's that's the nut that I'm going to use to check the fit because you're not going to be able to find an Acme thread uh, nut locally you can order them but I'm, I'm sure your Ace Hardware doesn't have one they'd laugh at you if you if you ask for one so this is going to be six threads per inch and the reason I'm telling you that is that on this gauge we have all these other little notches here that are from one to well, you go to 10, I guess. And after you have ground your tool to the 29 degrees, then you have to grind the end of it. Look at the end relief I got in there. And it must fit in the appropriate notch. And in this case, it's going to be six threads per inch. So we've ground off the end until it fits. Now let me show you all of that again on a larger model. I think you can understand that back in the olden days when I was still teaching machine shop that I needed to make larger models to show the whole class uh, at one time. Uh, although only three kids sitting in the front were interested in what I was saying anyway, but I tried to give them a large model so they could see it from the back of the room. So that's how I came upon these uh, big uh, wooden models. But uh, when you grind, and I also made a, a larger uh, paper gauge, uh, Acme gauge, but what you ought to do is go ahead and grind it so it fits. And you can come all the way to a point there initially if you want. And then uh, after you are satisfied that you have the correct angles and the correct side relief, both sides, uh, then you can put it on the grinder and grind the end so that it fits the appropriate notch in the gauge, which in uh, this case, this is a different one here, would fit uh, the six. Now it's not going to match up here. I'm fitting a a three 
because this thing is so large. But notice the end relief on there. Again, I'm holding this in a straight tool holder when I get to the lathe. So I have done nothing uh, with a back rake. But if you are going to use, as I told you, a standard uh, 16 and a half degree tool holder, you will have to grind it like this on the top. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about grinding the tools. You can go back through this and uh, repeat that uh, if necessary.